please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Dave Williams here with the long-awaited sequel, Trash or Treasure Jixxer 750. Well, there will be several sequels, but in this particular sequel, the teardown, specifically the rear end. We're gonna tear into some rear end. Now remember, I paid $400 for this bad boy and some people were very upset with that. You're ripping off those people you bought it from. It's worth more than that, arr, arr, arr. The outrage culture was en fuego. So we're gonna find out just how much trash and just how much treasure is in this thing. You never know, maybe I should have just bought a new bike. Trash or treasure, here it is. Yes, I was grimacing when it fired up because that means I gotta strip it all the way down to the ground and rebuild it up to know that when we ride it, it's safe. So, here we are, manufacturing time for your viewing pleasure. So what does it realistically mean? It means the engine's gonna stay in the frame, the subframe will stay on, but everything else has to come off, everything in order to know that when we use this for whatever testing and video work we're gonna do, it is 100% safe to use. I know there's many of you out there that would say it ran, so go ride it. I don't do that. That's not the way I work on a motorcycle. We're vulnerable enough as it is. And for some pretty basic time spent taking things apart, clean lube and adjust, reset, that time and that knowledge that you have in the motorcycle is priceless. So, Let's get this thing into pieces. All right, first job, split pin out. The tab's bent over, so we need to go ahead and pull that tab straight. There's nothing on the back side, so it's just this, so. So on the front edge here, the piece that broke off needs to tap a little bit straight or straighter so that we can get it to start. We won't use that one again. That's encouraging. <laughs> so the concern is that this won't move in here, that at some point we've got to find out if internally the space is missing in the cush drive, because if it wasn't, it was ridden, it'll weld to the axle. So here's the first stopping point. Why is the axle frozen? So the next piece is a little bit of gentle encouragement. You can use a sand hammer or a dead blow hammer 
um, I'm going to use a hard rubber hammer and just try and tap it and see if it'll break free. If it won't break free, we have a much bigger problem to try and solve in getting this axle completely out of this wheel to get the wheel off. And if we can't get the axle out at all and it's welded in place, that presents a massive problem that is basically a full stop point at this time, which is a nightmare. So fingers crossed. Can you see the list of comments now, Dave? Of course it was going to move, it was a GSXR! Come on. So, next, space is in, so that's good. Next piece to look at are these rubber drives and how loose the cush drive is in it. And it's wobbling everywhere. So when we put this in gear, it's gonna smash forward. So we have to go ahead and pull these out. They're only kept in with a little rubber nipple and these have got to be replaced. That doesn't work at all. The interior spacer pops right out, so that's good. And the wheel bearing is nice and smooth on this side of the cush drive. Very smooth, in fact. So that's very reassuring. So, so good so far there. Come on. Flip the other side, take the spacer out, check this bearing. <clears throat> All right, next we've got to pull the chain guard. So we've got to see what we've got. Now we've got a Phillips screw. We've got a push pin. And then it's located down here with another push pin. So. There's that. There's that. And there's that. I always put everything back where it belongs and it came from, that way we don't lose anything. So the next thing to do is check the rear brake caliper. There's kind of some brake material left. Yeah, there is. There's enough. So the next thing is, does it work? No. We've got to break the lower shock bolt out. Hopefully we can get these off without needing an impact gun. So first thing is Let's see what we can get in terms of tension here. Okay, that's moving, so that's reassuring. So now we need to hold this in place. Oh, go where you're supposed to go. Come on. There we go. Okay, 
nut off. So now we need to go to the top of the shock. Now hopefully this will break by itself and we won't need anything on the other side, but we'll see. That was much looser. And the nut's coming off all by itself. Yep. Okay, that's done. So with standard foot pegs, they bend and flop. So what we've got here is the U-joint that it actually gets into. First thing is to make sure everything's in place. Yeah. Now the bike's tied down firmly, so it'll resist for a second until we get past where we need to go. And then we've got to make sure it stays put. Yep. Remove the top bolt first. That comes out here. There's a top bolt. Now go find the top nut. That's out. So we'll put the top bolt back in. Then we'll pull the bottom bolt. Find the bottom nut. That's not had much lube on it, ever. Now we can pull the shock out, hopefully. Now that rear number plate holder might not allow us to do it. No, it won't. Okay, that's easy. Phillips. Yep. Not that way, it doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go that way. It should come out this way. That's the easy way, normally. All right, so let's remove this. There we go. Come on. Oh, notice that. Subframe, subframe bolts are missing. All of them. See it move? Ah. A new discovery to add to the list. Subframe bolts. Let's take that off. That should give me some wiggle room. What are you stuck on? Where is it stuck? Subframe bolts, Mr. Williams, if you would be so kind <laughs> to add those to the list. That would have made for an interesting ride. Now, I'm really curious to know what this is. Okay, good. Yeah, see it. So I'm wondering what this thing is. I have no idea. It doesn't belong there. I'm not sure what it is. Let's go find out. <clears throat> Feels like a bolt, but no, it's, oh no, it's not, it's not a bolt. It's 
a broken screwdriver. That's the original screwdriver, because oh, that's the lock top. The toolkit screwdriver. So that's been stuck between the engine and the swing arm as the swing arm's been pivoting that way. That's what the burnish marks are on it. <laughs> wow. What other delightful trash might we find in our treasure of a GSXR 750? Let's continue. All right, next we've got to try and break the nuts loose off the linkage arm. So there's one here and one there. Moss. No. Nope. All right, so we'll uh, we'll do the leverage piece. The foot. That's French for foot. <clears throat> okay. That's why God gave us feet. Right, bolts out, if they'll move. That one's moving fine, but notice that it's stuck on the end here. See that? No. Watch that. Oh. So it's seized there. And it's seized here. That one's off. Let's pry that one out, it'll go. There it is. All right. Now the question is, can we break it free of that? And is this one seized as well? It looks like it. Yeah, both are seized. So is that, that hits here. That's Yeah, so to get, get that out, get that out, we'd have, we want to take the kickstand off first. It's a linkage arm from the frame to the shock. All right, here we go. Okay, well that's good to know. So this all has to come off. The kickstand is our nemesis. That wasn't even tight. Of course this is probably bent to high heaven it was loose. Yep, it is. 
goes super tight and then it frees right up. There it goes. Yep. off 90 degrees no that's not working either we got the impact gun <clears throat> Way, though. No, always go the hard way first. Oh. Tighten first, and then that shakes it, and it should come off easier. Ninja Mars. <sighs> okay. Now the question is, I can't get to this one this way. This way. So we need another tie down. Switch it to the hard way first. Now I can't see it. There. Look at that Loctite. Beautiful. Now. That's too high. That's out of the way. All right, let's push this down a little bit. Okay, that's out, that's out. So there's a shim on the other side. So we've got to make sure that both shims are in place. So there's that one and that one. So those are where they're supposed to be. Now that needs to hang out of the way and that will come out. And then we can see all the corrosion here. Tons of corrosion. Jeez. Now we can see if we can break the bolts free. Now we've got to pull this bushing out. And you can see it's all corroded up in here. Yep, there it all is. Never been greased, never been touched. And you can see all the corrosion on both sides here that we've got to break apart to get these bolts out of here because this binds, these bolts won't move at all, so it binds the linkage when it's trying to move. All bad. Now the other thing we've got to look at is needle roller bearings in there. So, oh, yeah. you can see all the needles. So what we've got to do is make sure every single one of is is in there, and every single one of those is intact. And if not, then this has to get sent away to the shop for those bearings to be extracted and new bearings to be put in. Then the same goes on the other side. Let's pull the nut off, pull the bushing out. See how corroded that is again. And then your bearings are inside. And then this one with the shims which attaches to the frame, pulls out just the same way. Oof, that's gritty. That's not good. 
Boom, that's dry as a bone in there. Ooh, it is. That's a mess. <coughs> that's breaking, okay. So my suggestion, Moss, was to put it in the vise over there. Use the vise to help. But you said they're hollow bolts. Holy moly, weight saving, baby. You compress this. Yeah, you can put a fair bit of force on it, but you put it out around because they're drilled out. That wonderful weight saving game we got on from 2000 in weight saving wars through 2008. A lot of these are hollow and because they're so badly corroded, the only thing realistically we can do for now is just soak them in penetrate, just leave it upright and soak them in penetrating oil. Yes, we could clamp it in a vise here and yes, we could work it and work it and work it and work it and get it going, but we don't have time for that right now because I have the rest of the bike to pull apart. So we'll just leave this upright and soak it with penetrating lube around both sides over the course of the next day or so and hope it gets inside. And if it doesn't, then yes, we have to bring more manly force to the table. All right, we have ourselves here on the swing arm pivot bolt, a castle nut. Stupid right. nut. So I don't have the Suzuki tool to be able to do that, nor do I have a socket that is the right internal and external diameter to go ahead and cut and put in place to get this off. So the only way to loosen that up is to ever, ever so gently tap it with a screwdriver and see if it'll free. I want to pull the swing arm out to be able to assess the needle roller bearings in the swing arm. Before we do that, there's one very quick test, which will tell us whether we're in good shape or not, which is really easy, which is wiggle. Does it wiggle side to side? No. The bike moves side to side. Does it move freely? Yes. So no wiggle and no grinding, all the other stuff. It looks like it's in reasonable shape. Just derelict at this point. So. Let's go ahead and soak that, give it a minute. And then while that's soaking, we'll go ahead and pull this lock nut off. Oy. Thank you. Very kind of you to let yourself come out without four veins and a hernia. <laughs> oh dear. Same old, same old, same old. Look at that corrosion. So if we think we're going to get that out at this point by just unscrewing it, that ain't happening. So let's give this a good squirt as well. Squirt. It sounds so stupid in American, squirt. It sounds so much better in British, squirt. Okay. All right, so rather than tap this ring right now, because this ring could be seized here because of all the corrosion, I got my axle tool from 15 years ago. That fits in the hole. So now why don't we just break it free? We're there and see now it's been soaking for quite a while. There it goes, okay. And that's moving freely. Okay, so we know the swing arm will come out at this point. To get the swinging arm out, we can't take this off. So we know that the master cylinder on the rear brake needs to be rebuilt. So we'll go ahead and take the line off up here at the master cylinder, which will then leave the line free to come with the swing arm because inside the swing arm, there's a welded piece, which Dave will show when we pull the swing arm out down here, that's welded in location. And you have to feed the brake line through to get it out. Onwards. Okay, but wait, explain that stupid castle nut and its purpose in life. Okay. <laughs> so, when this is fastened back up, and this was just funny because with the soaking of the oil it actually started moving, so we'll move it back. You set your swing arm tight 
and then you torque it to the specific value and then you come in with a castle nut tool and this gets screwed in and now there's an associated torque value with this which is very low this becomes a friction fit between the frame and this so if the nut falls off the other side you have a little bit of redundancy here in not letting the swing arm pivot bolt and screw itself wow it's corroded And what's amazing is it doesn't need to be this long at all. So 12 mil nut on the brake line, but before I do that, so good God, really? Thank you. Sustained force is a wonderful thing. Oh, look at that. It's dry as a bone. <laughs> no brake fluid, senor. You might not have to rebuild it then. I might have to throw it away because it's all completely corroded and decomposed. Negative Nelly. <laughs> Oh wait, it's a GSXR, of course it's gonna be fine. I'm putting out positive energy to the universe. <sighs> All right. Okay. All right. Everything is now clear, which gives us the, the opportunity to remove the swing arm. So we'll see if we can get this bolt out. Just because it turns doesn't mean it'll go all the way through. All right, let's stop turning. There it goes, that's the end. Okay, so hold, wiggle, and this is where the corrosion on that other side can be a big impact. That's all fully corroded. All right, let's get around where I need to be. Sorry, Dave. So that will slide back and it will sit right there. All right, now it's out. Next on bearing checks. So this is a grease cover, which should have a lot of grease on it, which of course it doesn't. Next comes the spacer, which is also the bearing surface, which has grease on it. Yes. And then of course we have yet another needle roller bearing set in each side. And on the bottom back here, let's move that across. There's also another set of bearings in here. So our chain guide is here. And the chain guide clamps and holds the cover plate here on. So for us to be able to get into this and get to the bearings, there are two 10 millimeter bolts. Ah, oh, there's three actually, there's one there as well. There we go. Get rid of the spiders. Amazing what shows up. Not good, not coming out. That's bad. So the well nut inside may be stripped. Same, not coming out. And Oh. 
is coming out. We can just, now that that bottom is out, we can get in here, the covers here, the bearings there. See how rusty that is? And then we can just bend it out of the way and look. Now, as far as the chain goes, we could cut that chain right now and then get the swing arm out and be able to work on it much easier. I'd rather cut the chain and then feed the new chain all the way through and then go ahead and peen it while the wheel is in because it's just so much easier. So I'm not going to cut the chain now because I don't need to take the swing arm out to have it refurbished, painted, whatever. It doesn't need that. We're not going to go that way. Just to give you an idea of what it takes to replace the swing arm start to finish, we did it on the white Gixxer 750 because it had to be replaced due to the crash. It broke off one of the rear stand bobbins. So here you go. This is about 20 seconds long. We're into it. This took two hours. Two hours into 20 seconds. That's what it takes, start to finish, if you know what the heck you're doing. In our next episode, we'll tear into the front end. How much trash, how much treasure are we going to find up front? Nowhere close to get that tool from. And we are in the middle of nowhere. <laughs>